a pedido do Dr. Raj, uh, vai fazer uma muito breve contextualização. Estou a falar em português à vontade, porque o Raj, não obstante a sua modéstia, percebe muito bem português e fala com uma pronúncia muito bonita, uh, mas vai fazer a conferência em inglês. Uh, dizer só que é um enorme prazer que o Raj venha apresentar o, o, o que vem aqui hoje mostrar e eu diria que o aspecto mais para mim estimulante e que desde sempre me, uh, foi razão de um enorme apreço pelo Raj é, é a sua elegância. A elegância em todos os sentidos pessoal, mas uh, diria intelectual. Uh, e e eu creio que é muito importante e muito interessante de ver aqui uma pessoa que não é um arquiteto falar do valor enorme, como vamos ver e alguns conhecerão, do, do Prémio HK, eh, que é um prémio de uma relevância incrível, sobretudo pela maneira como está construído, vamos ver isso agora, um, e um, também não é um académico, e ao mesmo tempo não sendo um académico, eh, conhece bem a academia e relaciona-se ao mais alto nível com a academia, não sendo um arquiteto, conhece arquitetos e vai, eh, espero eu também, mostrar-nos aqui maneiras importantes de olhar para a arquitetura a partir de fora. Uh, obrigado, Raj. João, queria pedir que me dissesse as duas palavras. Bom, boa tarde a todos. Obrigado, em primeiro lugar, por exemplo, a Sra. Departamento de Arquiteturas Comunidades. Também obrigado ao Raj por se ter deslocado a Eva mais uma vez. Um, é uma bonita coincidência um, termos o Dr. Raj connosco. Se lembrarmos que penso que por volta de 2014 a 2015, a Universidade de Évora atribuiu o doutoramento honoris causa a sua excelência, o Príncipe HK. Um, e, um, o Príncipe HK é realmente o expoente de uma grande comunidade ismaelita e tem, obviamente, o seu emanado com sede em Portugal, que também é um, um, um fator muito distintivo um, do nosso país e da nossa cultura receber a sede de emanato, neste caso, Portugal em Lisboa. Mas a, 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 a Fundação HK tem uma network e trustees específicos para a divulgação da cultura, o estudo e a pesquisa. O Dr. Rajizar é o Deputy Director of the HK Interest for, for Culture. Eu convido os alunos, obviamente, a verem o website que está muito bem estruturado com todas as iniciativas. Um, é um grande prazer para o Departamento de Arquitetura, para mim em particular, e para os pais também, receber o Dr. Rajizar, que nós uh, conhecemos já desde 2019, fizemos um protocolo com o HK Interest for Culture de Fundação, já desenvolvemos, desenvolvemos um projeto em FES, que alguns alunos já beneficiaram, obviamente, dessa experiência que nos está a trabalhar. Uh, o Dr. Raj tem uma formação multicultural que cross different disciplines. Uh, economia, antropologia, a sociologia, uh, foi professor em Florença, foi professor em Paris, trabalhou largos anos na Unesco e, obviamente, abraça com todo carinho e dedicação, uh, com grande inteligência, a divulgação um, desta cultura dentro do espírito de Cantas for Culture. E ele irá falar de vários anos de experiência que o Prémio HK tem acumulado, é um prémio que é atribuído de 3 em 3 anos e precisamente tem várias hierarquias de, de juries e é um prémio que evoca quer os clientes, quer as cidades, quer os arquitetos, toda a equipe. Portanto, saem por fora deste canal que nós estamos habituados um bocadinho. Uh, isomórfico do um prémio para o arquiteto, este prémio é muito mais abrangente e, obviamente, foca a arquitetura construída no espaço uh, muçulmano. Um, obrigado, Raj. Boa conferência. Muito obrigado, João e João. And bo muito boa tarde a todos. Uh, as uh, was pointed out already, I can't do much more in, in, in Portuguese, I'm afraid. So I'm going to continue in English. I hope it will be clear. If I speak too fast, just raise your hand and let me know. I want a little correction for, for, for you, Joao. I'm not the deputy director of the Trust. I was hired by the Trust just about five years ago to set up an education program that would be a way of sharing the accumulated knowledge resources, the learnings from two of the Trust's flagship programs with um, the, the world of academia and the world of schools. So I'm a kind of bridge builder person between the two, and I'm enjoying it immensely. Uh, of course, I knew about the work of the trust, I knew about the work of the award before joining, but uh, the following the actual evolution of the, of the award, as I have now done for several years, 
is really an exciting experience. And I'm sure some of you know about the award already, and I hope that what I will share with you today will be more learning of a very useful type. And Madam Rector, I'm very honored by your presence. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of you who are faculty and students. And I'm going to get going uh, right away just to share with you the, the fact that the Aga Khan Development Network, which is a, a constellation of organizations and agencies put together over 60, 70 years now by the Aga Khan, is actually a huge organization with different agencies. And we, the Aga Khan Trust for Culture, we are on, on the right there. We are the smallest of those pillars, economic development, social development, cultural development. And the reason that I've put the Aga Khan Foundation, that's where it is in red, is that we're not the Aga Khan Foundation. <laughs> it's not terribly important. I mean, who cares what we are? What counts is what we do. But that's just a, a, a little nu nuance. And, and you can see that, that in that social development package, there are two universities. Uh, there's the Aga Khan Foundation itself. There's a network of schools, the health services. There's the Aga Khan Agency for Habitat. And there's the Aga Khan Academies, and one academy is going to be coming up in Oeirish. It'll probably be ready in about five years. So that's the, that's the um, network. And just to give you an idea of um, the different activities of the network in one region of the world, here are the countries in which one or more of these agencies actually operates. And I'm now going to go straight into why His Highness decided in the 70s to set up uh, an award for architecture. And I'll draw your attention to that last sentence that I picked up from one of his recent interviews, where he says he wants to make the world a better place in terms of the injunctions of the Quran. And that means bringing values into environments, buildings, and contexts which make the quality of life better for future generations than it is today. So that seems to me <coughs> such a, a wonderful mission statement that an architect would have, a planner could have. And here you have the, the founder of this network who is articulating this vision. This vision which is related to, to, to those points that are on this slide, which indicate how important architecture is in terms of worldview, in terms of values, in terms of being the expression of a culture, in terms of dictating how people live together, how they live with each other, how they, they organize their places and spaces. And to be sure, this link is, is strong in, in every civilization, every culture, but it's probably particularly strong in, in Islam. And this is just another, um, what I do to, I've enlarged it without wanting to, so what do I do to, I use a Mac, and everything's different on Macs. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Th thanks, muito obrigado. So where was I? Um, yeah, this is the slide I was on. And I just, I'm not going to say these things. I just want to give you a few moments. These are all taken from statements or interviews that uh, His Highness has given. Uh, they explain why in the late 70s he brought a, a group of scholars, architects, and uh, uh, decision makers together to uh, actually set up uh, an award that began its work in, in, in 1980 with these three, three purposes, to recognize architectural e excellence, to encourage not just architects, but clients and users to learn from their own architectural heritage, to, to close that gap, that, that discontinuity, the rupture of continuity between the past and the present, which is particularly strong uh, across the <coughs> Muslim world, and then thirdly, to try and set standards of building, standards of excellence in building that were appropriate to the needs and aspirations of those societies. And just in one sentence, if you could, what is the one single mission of the award? And that is to 
work, maybe you could call this a pedagogy of influence, a pedagogy of example, to influence the dynamic of contemporary architecture for the better. And that has given the, the award a very distinctive mandate. It is the only uh, architecture in the, in the, in the world, award in the world that uh, recognizes not just architects, but also clients, uh, engineers, uh, master artisans. So the, 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 the award has gone to these sorts of people, not just to star architects. Uh, the second line is just some of the facts. Uh, 108, 28 projects have been awarded so far, with almost 5,000 nominations received for those projects. And there's this huge documentation of actually more than 9,000 building projects. And this is the sort of basic resource. This archive is a very rich resource for educational purposes. And this is a, a slide. I should have shown it a little earlier. It, it changed places mysteriously. This is the Aga Khan uh, himself. You see him here in the, in the middle with a group of, of, uh, of architects, some of whom are very well known, uh, doing the planning for setting up the award. Nobody, nobody really knew what it was going to be. It's not as if you have this CEO, this, this spiritual leader who says, I know exactly what I want to do. He didn't know exactly what he wanted to do. He, uh, he, so that's why he called on people that he thought were the best people to ask and who could help him. And what I'm sharing with you here now is, is just to give you an idea of the, the mechanism. And this is the mechanism that was set, put in place uh, for the uh, 2022 award cycle, which was given in Muscat uh, several months ago, in October of last year. And so you have a process where a network of uh, nominators nominate the properties, documentation, documentation is, 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 co is collected, and then the master jury has a first meeting uh, in the year in which the, the, the award is going to be given, and as a result of that first meeting, a certain number of on-site reviews are requested by architects who go out, engineers and others, who go out to actually inspect the nominated sites uh, on-site. A shortlist is announced. Then there's a second jury meeting to de determine from that shortlist how many awards should be given. Uh, the announcement takes place in September and the award ceremony is invariably in, in, in October and is followed by <coughs> a series of post-award events. Um, and so here, on this slide, uh, you can't see the names, obviously, but here are faces of people who have served on the ma either the steering committee, <coughs> which gives general guidelines, or the master jury, which does the real nitty-gritty work, and it's always, in both cases, it's always a mix of architects, architectural historians, philosophers, writers, artists, who serve on these two, on these two committees, if you will. So, if I start with the, with the first cycle, uh, what I'm, I'm going to share with you is just you know, a couple of uh, slides, a couple of views of, of each of the buildings from, from the first cycle, this is just a sort of a, a tapestry of what went into the first cycle. This is the first m steering committee with His Highness that began to deliberate. And these are small photographs of some of the, some of the properties. And uh, so what I'm sharing with you here is one of the, uh, uh, one of the properties in the first uh, series, which was the, uh, a case of how a historic building could be conserved and adapted for present day reuse. And that was very sort of typically architectural. You could say that there were skills that you could recognize that, that were involved in it. But then there was also this uh, project, which was a kampung, uh, almost a slum clearance project in Indonesia, which was the rehabilitation of um, a, a kampung, which is the, the, the uh, Javanese word for that kind of settlement area, and there was nothing fancy, there was no great fancy architecture involved. And that, uh, di that binary, that that there will always be uh, the art of architecture, the skills of the architect or the engineer, but also much more simple kinds of interventions in the built environment, 
which are always have to be uh, very community-based and um, uh, linked to the improvement of the quality of life. You, you saw that phrase in the, the citation that I shared with you earlier. So here you have the Jakarta Kampung Improvement Program. That was the, what it was called. And it was the, 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 the objective was to upgrade uh, low-income areas and uh, the associated challenge of providing housing for low-income residents. And this has been an abiding concern of the award over the cycles. So I go into the, the, the second cycle. And um, in the second cycle, uh, the emphasis remained on this link with tradition. How do we restore uh, that link with the heritage? But there was increasingly more and more of a concern on what we saw with the uh, Kampung project, the Indonesian project, a concern with the problems of uh, housing and habitat for populations, mainly urban but also rural. And the, the, the slide that I'm going to share with you here, this is um, uh, the Ramses Wisa Wasif Art Center in, in, in Giza, Egypt, which was built entirely by, does, does anybody know? Well, it was the architect himself, Ramses Wisa Wasif, and it was built in the 1950s entirely in mud brick, and it was used as a weaving school, then it, it, it evolved, there were showrooms, workshops, and what for the architect was important was this revisiting <coughs> of something that was quintessentially Egyptian, that you could, you could associate with the pharaonic, with the Coptic, and even with the Muslim inheritance, something that would work for today. And uh, in, in contrast completely, uh, and, and this was not heritage, this is a modern building, this is a mosque. This is the White Mosque in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, in Visoko, which um, was really the architect was saying, to hell with all of your traditions of mosque building. I want to do something that's completely different. I will respect the Qibla and the Mihrab. I will have a minaret, but this is my vision. And it was that, um, that, that daring on the part of that architect that appealed to the, the master jury when it decided on its um, awards. In the, the third cycle, there were 11 projects that were chosen. Some had to do with urban upgrading. Uh, but I'm going to show, show you uh, a, a particular building. Some of you may recognize it. And uh, you will recognize it even uh, better when um, I tell you who is the champion of this building on the master jury. Does anybody know where this building is? Well, it's, it's a mosque in, in, uh, in, 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 in Pakistan. It's called the, the Hong Mosque. And for many people, this would be an example of terrible uh, kitsch architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the champion of it was somebody called Rob Robert Venturi. You've all heard about Robert Venturi. And perhaps uh, from what you know of Robert Venturi, you're not, you're not surprised. One of the things that, um, can, can anybody define for me how, how you would describe the work of Robert Venturi? Uh -huh. let's, let's have a try, Jean. Maybe, maybe this is, he's too old for, for students of our, of, our, of our time. He was, he was a mannerist. What, he was known as a post modern mannerist because he was, he was interested in, in, in doing all kinds of extraordinary flamboyant things with, with buildings. You see his buildings. And that's why he liked this building because it, it reminded him of what he himself liked to do. And he's very well known for having coined a maxim, less is a bore. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is he arguing against? Mm -hmm. Mies van der Rohe. Less is more. So this was, he was a kind of bad boy of, of, of the architectural profession. And um, let me just read to you the citation of the jury, probably half written by Venturi himself. Mm. Hong enshrines and epitomizes the popular taste in Pakistan with all its vigor, pride, tension, and sentiment. Its use and misuse of signs and symbols expresses the appropriate growing pains of an architecture in transition. 
And that notion of transition uh, certainly was very strong in the countries of what used to be called in those days <coughs> still the third world. That transition which involved transformation, which, which involved many borrowings, some of them quite indiscriminate borrowings, from what they thought was the right thing to do in, in, in the West. So I'll continue uh, on to the, the third cycle. And here in the third cycle, you had um, this housing complex in, uh, in Morocco, um, whose name I've forgotten, I think, was the Dar el housing complex. And I have it here on my, on my notes. Um, but it doesn't matter. Or maybe I have skipped a couple of pages. Let me just check. No, um, and we go to the fourth cycle. Now, there's again, there's a contrast. You have the. Does anybody recognize the building on the left? Paris. Yes, the Institut du Monde d'Art, which is r right near wh where I actually live in Paris, and um, the issue that that came out very strongly in the, this cycle of the award, uh, which had 12 laureates, was um, uh, a, a combination of, of factors that the, that the um, uh, jury was, was concerned with. Um, this rooting something in the contemporary, but having recourse to symbols and signs uh, which come out of um, Islamic ge geometric patterns. And it was interesting because this was the first uh, sort of very visible acknowledgement of the fact that there are representatives of Muslim cultures not living in their traditional homelands anymore because of the scale of movement, mobility, and migrations in the, in the 20th century. You now have Muslims and Muslim architecture, you could call it, in, in many other parts of the world. And yet, at the same time, the, the jury was concerned with maintaining a strong recognition of what was going to work for local communities and, and the poor and the rural. And the vision, uh, the, the image on, on the right there is, a, is, a, is one of the uh, places occupied by the uh, Gramin Bank in Bangladesh, the, the buildings that were set up by the Gramin uh, Bank program and for which um, <coughs> Muhammad Yunus, the founder of the Gramming Map pro Program, won the, the Nobel Prize. <coughs> so um, continuing now, in the fourth cycle, this uh, was a project in the diplomatic quarters of Riyadh. It's known as the Al-Kindi Plaza. And you can see the, um, uh, the, the, the way in which there is now <coughs> the beginnings of concern with elements other than the pure, 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 purely architectonic. It's the natural, the components of the environment which may not be built, and uh, the whole issue of landscaping. How important is landscaping in relation to the structures that we build? And during that, um, that cycle, uh, there was another building which has become iconic. Anybody? No, I, other than other than faculty, does any any student recognize this building? Which country? Which architect? Um, it's it's Bangladesh, and it's Louis Kahn. Louis Kahn's bu building, a magnificent building for uh, the uh, assembly, the parliament um, in, in in Bangladesh. And so there again, you you have the <coughs> in each cycle there is this combination of, of different different perspectives that come together under a single umbrella. And, and, and we are often asked, but what are the criteria? There must be criteria that the Aga Khan has established. No, 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 not at all. Uh, the Aga Khan has absolutely no uh, criteria that he's established other than the guidance that he gives to the, to the steering committee whenever the steering committee meets for the first time. And that guidance is about working with the local community, uh, with uh, bridging the gap between tradition and moder modernity. Uh, it's about <coughs> creating a modernity, a contemporary that is harmonious with, the, with its surroundings, and generally speaking, uh, improving the quality of life, and thinking in terms of what really makes a difference for development. And those are very general ideas. And those general ideas are then shared uh, by the, 
the steering committee, which gives a sort of general brief to the jury, and then the jury depends on you know who are the strong characters in the jury. You have a venturi in the jury, and you come up with those kinds of selections. But it's always a debate, and it's sometimes uh, a difficult debate, a long debate, sometimes even a little acrimonious. I have never attended because because of the nature of the uh, of the of the process it is considered to be confidential but when the master jury presents its um, conclusions his highness has no he, he doesn't object and i'm sure there must be buildings that he doesn't like as much or when he's looked at the the, the shortlisted projects he must have said you know i hope they choose this one but <laughs> probably they don't choose the ones he would like but he accepts the, the decision completely so i go on to the fifth cycle and um, I'm sharing with you something that's interesting. This is a palace in Turkey. And this was uh, recognized because the jury said it's very important for, for, for us, particularly if we have been colonized, or if we believe that our society today must turn its back on a, a bad tradition of the past. These are Ottoman palaces. But the Ottoman palaces, just like the colonial architecture in in India, in Pakistan, in Africa, is part of the heritage of the people in India, Pakistan, Africa. And, and there are people who would like to pull these things down. So here the jury was saying, look, let's, let's recognize really sensitive restoration and reuse of buildings that uh, may re reflect <coughs> westernizing influences. But then what's wrong with westernizing influences? Those the, are the, the, the influences that we, that we lived with. Um, the sixth cycle went into a more sort of, um, let's say, in, in environmentalist uh, process. And so what you have here is a, a high-tech tower uh, which um, has many, it's in, it's in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, and it has many um, energy-saving features. And in that same, uh, same process, in that same year, this green area here is a reforestation project next to the city of Ankara, which served to actually uh, constitute a kind of a buffer zone, uh, protecting the city, uh, limiting air pollution levels. And so here you have a, a, a kind of reasoning which, say, which says, look, there are urbanists who've thought about these things, which are environmental improvements, or others who have thought about a very bold kind of modernism that uh, uses technology. That's the case on the left. Let's recognize those different things. And in that, um, in that uh, particular sixth cycle, there was this project that <coughs> has become iconic, which is um, the project of the uh, Pritzker Prize winning Indian architect Balkrishna Doshi. It was a housing project which was built in a modular way so that the owners could actually uh, move into it and do different things with their, with their property as their incomes decreased, as their lives evolved. And what I wanted to show you here, uh, this is a book that I've already gifted to the library. This is the result of a fourth year design studio, which was organized by a, a, a college in, um, in Mumbai where the students went to the city of Indore, where this project is located, and looked at this project as well as another project, which was recognized by the award a few years earlier, which was a housing project as well. It was a slum, a slum clearance pro project. And the students were asked to uh, work on these solutions that had been found by the architects, think of other solutions that they thought would work better, interview local people, find out what had happened. Here is the architect's project. Here is what the master jury said would, why it liked this project. Has it remained the same? And of course, there are a huge number of differences, and these differences were all documented by the students and the faculty, and then they, were, they, they made this into a book which we encouraged because we thought it was such a good example of how the material could be used in a creative way. It's not just a question of saying, here's what the Akhan does, <laughs> learn it. It's, this is what has been done, now what would you do better? Or how, how do you find that in reality things have worked out? And we have several projects like that. 
And actually, out of this project and several others, we now have, um, with the Aga Khan Award for Architecture Secretariat, we have a new sub-project which consists of trying to assess the impact of uh, the award, the impact that the award has had in, on, on the area itself, in relation to the building, in relation to uh, architectural evolution in that country. And so that's a new project that's just getting, getting off the ground. I move on. The, the seventh cycle uh, was, I won't spend much time with it, it was the least diverse because uh, four of the seven projects were located in the Indian subcontinent. There were no particular new messages uh, in this cycle. Uh, it was um, what they were trying to do here was let's look at projects that have some kind of a regional relevance in their own region. So the projects in South Asia, how are they relevant for the rest of the Asian continent? And um, here, uh, what I've chosen is the whoops, two buildings, one by Charles Correa, the Indian Goan architect, and uh, another one from the same cycle, which is a conservation project, uh, the conservation of the old town of Hebron in the, in the occupied territories. And it's, um, in both cases, the, the emphasis was on the uh, appropriateness and for the Korea project, the, this assembly building, uh, the same thing, the, the assembly for, the, for a local government, a provincial government in India, the jury said, this complex represents the creation of an, ex of an ensemble that provides a wide range of spatial experiences as one moves through the complex. But of course we can't do, but you can see that there's use of, of red <coughs> sandstone, tiles, we can't see the tiles, but it was very in ingeniously put together. <coughs> now this is a, a project from the eighth cycle, which um, again had uh, traditional design elements, a restoration project, and this is the Nubian Museum in Aswan that uh, maybe some of you have actually visited. And again, here you have a contemporary architect trying to be contemporary in, in his use of form, yet be inspired by ancient temple structures, fortresses, as well as the domestic architecture vocabulary. And it was considered to be by the, the master jury, a really pretty good example of that aim being fulfilled. And this is, <coughs> coming back to the landscaping dimension, this is a public garden called the Baghe Ferdouzi in, in Tehran, which uh, was innovative because of its approach to both the conception and the execution of environmental <coughs> design. Again here, how to create a space, a connecting space between urbanism and nature uh, at the base of the mountains which are behind the city of Tehran. Uh, it became uh, very important for young people as, as a place of social interaction, uh, a space of recreation, and a very original uh, use of the topography of the site. <coughs> now the ninth cycle, two very uh, iconic structures, one of which is, is shown here. You know who's the building, uh, who built that one? Cesar yeah, Cesar Pelli, Petronas office towers. And even more uh, iconic was the uh, Bibliotheca Alexandrina in, in Cairo, built by a Norwegian team. Then you have the Petronas towers, but in the same cycle, you have that, which is a school which is a, a, a village school in Burkina Faso, the first project of somebody called Francis Kerry. Anybody heard of Francis Kerry? Yeah. Why? He got the Pritzker this year or last year? Last, last, last year. year. Okay, but this was his first project and it really bowled over the, the master jury because really on the opposite side of the spectrum because of the way traditional <laughs> materials and techniques were being used to uh, create a modernist structure. I'll continue to the 10th cycle, um, which again continued the experimental trend. Uh, and one thing that happened that was significant for the life of the award, previously, up to this point, the jury had not announced 
publicly the shortlisted projects. In this cycle, it decided in 2007 to publish the shortlisted projects. And curiously, it gave it a little bit more room to decide and to, to award the, the, the award to fewer projects because there had been this wide selection of uh, shortlisted projects. It gave them a little bit of leeway. And um, the, the aim here was very particularly to try and, in the projects that were chosen, uh, explore this complex negotiation that a building or a home a dwelling has with uh, being there and being somewhere else, with the challenges of mobility and, and, and migration. And this is a, a, a view uh, from Nicosia. Nicosia, which uh, w was a divided city. And the prize that year, the award that, that year, was given to a project in which both the Turkish side, the Turkish Cypriots and the Greek Cypriots, created a commission together to improve the, the condition of, of Nicosia city. Uh, and, and so that division was, if you like, overcome by this joint effort that was undertaken by uh, architects and, and, and planners. But quite different, this is, the, this is an embassy built. It, it, it's it's um, built by a, a Dutch architect called Dirk van Gameren, and it's in Addis Ababa. It's the Dutch embassy in Addis Ababa. Again, modernist, but making very subtle use of the site of materials, locally available materials, timber, craftsmanship, uh, and the like. The 11th cycle, you have this project, which is a wetlands project in Saudi Arabia, which is all about the restoration of uh, the environmental restoration, natural areas. And then you have a very ingenious project in a Chinese village. Here, nothing to do with Muslims, no Muslims in this village but it, been, it had been nominated because the two parts of the village were kind of separated and there was a creek, uh, a small creek that separated the two parts. And the architect decided that he would make a structure that would be a school and he called it the bridge school and it enabled the two sides of the village to, to come together. Again, the, totally modernist in conception but local in the use of the, the materials that were employed. Uh, the 12th cycle, uh, this is, um, you will recognize that bridge, uh, yes, in, in Rabat, uh, Rabat Saleh. And uh, this view on the, 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 the right here is um, uh, the Muslim cemetery in, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a town in Western Austria called Altach, which had had a Muslim population for many years. But the uh, people, when they died, families could not actually bury their, their dear ones, their loved ones, according to Muslim rights. So either they didn't have the Muslim rights or they sent the bodies back home. And so this, apart from that sort of sentimental reasoning, which the appropriateness for that, for that community, it was also a recognition of the, of the quality uh, of, of the design, the, the, the profile, the fluid uh, geometry, the, the iconic nature of the, of the building. And in the 13th cycle, 2016, you have um, one building that was probably given out of sentimental reasons. Does anybody recognize the work here? What is that yeah. characteristic of? Yeah. Whose work is that? Zaha Hadid. And she had died just a few months before. It had been nominated. It's in Beirut. It's uh, part of uh, the American University of Beirut. And um, you, had, uh, you had also, uh, the next slide shows an, a, another project which is, which is uh, very interesting, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. That's a, a larger vision of, of the Zahadi project. And that is a public space called Superkillen in Denmark, which is inhabited, it's in a very poor zone, sort of poorest zone of the city. And so it obviously has all the immigrants. So you have Muslim immigrants, you have uh, Hindu immigrants, you have African immigrants from different African countries, you have European immigrants from Eastern Europe. And uh, the, the architects decided that they wanted to make a space that had symbolic elements that spoke to all these cultures and that could be owned by all of these cultures. And, and that's 
That's what worked uh, very well in, in, in this case. It was designed as really a meeting place for uh, the residents of Denmark's most ethnically uh, diverse neighborhoods. So maybe in, in Lisbon you could ex imagine something like this in maybe Moraria uh, that, w that would <coughs> transform. <Right. coughs> and this brings us to the 2019 cycle. And this is where uh, I want to share with you a film which... Um, now how do I get to the... I should be able to click on the, on the film because here the master jury, the steering committee and the um, architects themselves are given the floor. So yeah, that's, that would work. Probably after such an interesting film, what I'm going to say is a bit of an anti-climax, but I'm going to say it in, in as few words as possible because I wanted to complete the, the story, and the story ends with the 2022 cycle. And uh, this little map shows you where the winning and, and shortlisted projects were actually uh, located. And I'm going to go very quickly. You can't really see very much, so I'm going to go right into the individual projects. And, and some people, uh, there were six projects that were awarded, and some people uh, were very disappointed by this continuing em emphasis on very simple, uh, if not simplistic, local structures. And they said, but you know, what's the, what, what's the, what's the architecture involved in, in, for example, this, this uh, urban river spaces project, which becomes something for the community to use. It improves its access to the river. Uh, but it was done so simply, and, and it was, with such a, 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 an economy of means and such elegant success, that that's what convinced the, the master jury. Another example, and of course there's something obviously a, a little bit political here, is the community spaces that were built for the uh, Rohingya refugees in Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh. And nobody has actually quite understood why it is that the architects in Bangladesh are so successful <laughs> at getting Aga Khan Award uh, projects because they have a, you know, quite a large number of them. And there's even an institute in Dhaka that runs a whole course and they invite people from abroad to come, a whole course on the projects that have been uh, uh, awarded in Bangladesh. Uh, I think it's the closeness to the, to, to, to the natural conditions and, and real human needs that, that explains that. Uh, so that's the second. This is a, an international airport in a small uh, city uh, of, of Indonesia. And um, you, you can see why the, the building itself sort of extends the language of the landscape into, into the building. And it's um, a completely different way of being in an airport if you, if you walk through it. Uh, and um, this was, the prize was actually awarded in Muscat, not just to the architects, but to the city uh, governor who had wanted this project, and he, had, he had chosen this project, and so he came for the award ceremony as well. And um, we think that this is going to have a, quite a big influence in Indonesia because they're planning to build some 300 more airports in small cities like this over the coming years. And uh, this is uh, a, a, a project in Tehran, which is a, an a, a abandoned brewery which became an art, art center, and it's now uh, a private mu museum for contemporary art. And so here again, you have a return to that abiding theme of appropriate reuse of a historical building through uh, innovative architecture. This is um, back to Senegal, uh, a, a, a school, again, built very simply, but with uh, references to the surrounding environment. And the last example here is the uh, Nimea guest house. Uh, so we're back to a, a, a great architect, which has been abandoned for many years in Tripoli, in, in Lebanon, uh, which again d doesn't have anything specifically Islamic about it, but which uh, is, is worthy of, re of, of rewarding that <coughs> discovery and the, the restoration of that building. And with that, I've finished. Thank you very much for being such a good audience, and I hope you...
I should have said that you feel free to interrupt uh, during the presentation, but I know that you're so polite in Portugal that you wouldn't have dared to do that. But I hope you will now. Thank you, Raj. Obrigado. Se tiver aí pessoas para colocar, alguma coisa que estão obrigados a fazer, passa neste momento. Podem falar em português, and if I don't understand, I'll ask Ron to help. But I understand, sort of, a lot. Would you think more, mais ou menos, a reunião do do master jury? Usually, it's um, one and a half or two days. The um, longer meeting is the second one, when they have to determine the shortlist, and that's where all the fights occur, because there's a lot of disagreement, and you can imagine that uh, particular jury members come with their, their preferred projects. And so the, the second meeting is usually longer, but it has to be just two days. Yes. And it could be very, two very long days, you know, 12 hour days, 14 hour days. A edição de 2015 foi em Lisboa, em Portugal, a apresentação. A apresentação, em cerimónia, em Lisboa, em 2013. Right. Can I, can I, um, so, the, the idea of the, of the, uh, the architects present their projects, they submit the to the uh, no, it's it's nominators. It's nominators. Right. So there's a, a second, uh, um, first degree of nominations that are made. Yes. And those those uh, are local nominators. They don't <coughs> they don't have to be local, but uh, they generally are people who know the country. For example, if it's a country like Egypt, there's no problem. There are local architects or uh, faculty members of one of the universities. Um, if, in certain cases, the, the, the nominator is somebody who has been several times to that particular country and knows it, and sometimes the nominator is, uh, is, is somebody drawn from the cadre, the roster, as it, like, of, uh, as it were, of, of nominators, who goes into the setting fairly cold without any particular uh, previous knowledge. It's, it's quite varied, but... Um, uh, the, 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 uh, I, I think I'm, I, should, I should specify that the, the nominators are not the people who visit, it's the on-site reviewers. I was getting mixed up between the two. So the nominators are just people who have a bright idea. If I, I could even be a nominator, perhaps. I've, I've seen a wonderful building in, in Portugal. So the nomination is filed according to certain parameters that have to be followed certain kind of documentation, photographs, and so on and so forth. And then uh, there's a screening process that is carried out by the Secretariat. And um, all the projects that are considered uh, eligible are then seen by the, the master jury. The master jury then says, OK, from these eligible projects, we, di we discard half of them, or three quarters of them. The ones we really like, these need to be looked at much more closely. And that's where the on-site reviewers get sent. Yeah. But you, you also spoke that there's um, an overview of the, of the impact of the award in the people. But I was wondering if there is also a kind of an overview on the nominations and applications that are made in the sense of how, how well do they represent, um, well, there is this idea of, of, of a, a, a common representation, mm -hmm. I suppose. So how are they leveled in terms of uh, all the countries, or, uh, or are they uh, more uh, are, are they un, un, unsettled? Uh, in, 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 in I, I understand your question. It's, it's, a, it's an important question. It's, it's left pretty random mm -hmm. in, in the sense that um, the, the nominators are people who are considered to have their fingers on the pulse. Uh, many of them are journalists, architectural critics. And, and uh, so um, the um, award itself, um, 
they also travel, the staff of the award is a very small staff, staff but they, projects are, are brought to their attention as well. But there is no uh, foolproof way in, in advance of determining some kind of a, a grid. It, it, it happens the other way around, if you like. So, uh, if I understood, there is no criteria in each uh, cycle. It depends on the, on the nominations. It, de it depends on the master jury. Yes. First of all, the, the steering committee sets out certain priorities. Like in the more recent cycles, it is, it is set out the great importance of looking at um, the interface between traditional <coughs> materials, the environment, and the local population. The first master jury would not even have thought of that. Of they would have said, we want you to look at the how tradition and modernity can be combined in, in a great building. So really, s the architect was totally central. Now what has happened is that the, the user, the community, is more central. Mm -hmm. And that evolution is more or less given in a general way by the steering committee. And then it's interpreted by the master jury. And sometimes it's interpreted quite strictly, at other times not so strictly. But the master jury is master. Do you think these prices contribute to the development of architecture in these countries, namely in Bangladesh, for example? Yes. Uh, well, yes. I'm not from. I'm not an architect, so I do right. not know there were so many prices in uh, in uh, in Bangladesh. Yes. The, the, it is definitely it is definitely done that, but I don't know of any scientific study. That's no, any no. research done by an, an anthropologist, let's say. Um, which actually did try and measure this. It's a little bit like uh, cultural diplomacy. Everybody says it's wonderful that each country should have a cultural diplomacy. Nobody's ever measured what impact the cultural diplomacy actually has. Uh, so here, th that, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. And um, the, the impressionistic takeaway, the answer to your, your question is that in countries where there's, uh, like Bangladesh, it's been very influential. In Egypt, it's the, the work of the award has been uh, very influential. Perhaps not so much in um, Saudi Arabia, but because there are other forces that, uh, that are in play there. But I think the, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, well, I, I recognize a lady here, who, and then, and then, then the, the lady there. Please. Uh, ao longo destes 40 anos do Sim. prémio, um, uh, e a designação de arquitetura, Sim. Uh, inicialmente foram mais centrados na arquitetura. Sim. Mas mostrou-nos projetos que vão também para uh, os espaços naturais, para... para Uh, que enquadram não o objeto, Sim. mas uh, uh, Exatamente. áreas de, Sim. de, de cidade. Sim. Uh, uh, o que eu pergunto é se, uh, havendo algum impacto, e eu acho que tem que haver algum impacto, uh, 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 se esta designação do prémio, ao longo destes anos, não merece aqui uma revisão e uma maior abertura porque já não estamos a falar exclusivamente da arquitetura. Sim. E, e se pensar alguma hum. vez em eh, renomear Sim. o prémio, uma vez que eh, nos mostrou aqui esta maior abertura. E, Sim. e isso é significativo. Sim. That's, a, that's an important point, but I, I think um, the... What's the word I'm looking for? The sort of... The, the prégnance, you would say in French, of... of uh, the term, the Aka Khan Award for Architecture. It's so established. And people have realized that it's not just about architects, because the, the actual practice has proved that. Um, we, I, don't, I haven't heard of any recent discussion along those lines of the steering committee saying we should call it something else. It's too well known for what it is to, 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 to change. I, I, if I were in a position of responsibility, I would understand where you're coming from, but I wouldn't want to change the, the, the name for that reason. Because, and, and the, it is criticized for that reason. I was in India recently, and uh, I met 
several architects in my, on my trip, and one of them was very violently against the last series. He said, what's these minor projects, are not really architecture, and uh, so we said, fine, but don't you think those, those projects are important for the people who live in them and use them? And he, he wasn't too happy with that. He wanted something more, more spectacular. Madam. Um, thank you for your presentation. I clearly remember the green presentation in Castel de São Jorge in 2013, a beautiful si. event, and the exhibition in the Cultural Center of the Line, si. where you could, be, you could see and, uh, the difference, the, the shift from mm -hmm. the architecture to the user of yes. the architecture. And that was, uh, I think, very clear on the, on the selective projects that were presented there, <coughs> and the videos and the comments uh, made <coughs> of the projects, where Aga Khan had the, the kindness to invite Portuguese architects to comment, which was very mm -hmm. nice. But the thing I wanted to ask is, this shift for from the building to the, the, the user, um, I know it, it's difficult to measure, but is there any um, interest by the Aga Khan uh, to uh, institution to understand the impact of the awards on the people? We are beginning, that's, that, that's a really good question. We are beginning, I referred to that a, a little earlier. Um, what happened is that, that um, we've constituted a little Middle Eastern group <laughs> of architectural faculty. And the Egyptian member of this informal task force, if you like, um, said, look, I want my students, fourth year uh, design studio students, I want them to look at all of the premiated projects in Egypt. And um, the seminar will be devoted, the fourth year seminar will, will be devoted to those, to those projects. And I want my students to re-examine those projects and look at the impact, the broader impact, and that's what they did. And they came up with some surprising uh, conclusions. There was one project that's been totally abandoned. It was thought very highly of when it was um, created. Uh, but the family just can't maintain it, and it's, it's, in, it's in ruins. And there are other projects in that series which, uh, on the other hand, have had quite a lot of impact on architectural practice and on the local community. So that is something that we are now saying we will now try and find uh, partners in architecture schools who are willing to do the same thing with their students to, for the projects in their countries. But do the, do the people, does the people uh, realize the importance of the award? Because if it doesn't have an impact on their daily life, does it, does it at least enhance the esteem for the architecture to care for mm -hmm. the building? Does it have that effect? I think it does. The, 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 when you see in, when the award is presented uh, in, a, in, a, in, in any country, there's a lot of media coverage. And that media coverage, including the speeches that are made, the, the authorities of the country's concern, all of that is picked up. And so there is a, a, a kind of speed, spinning down or feeding down, a trickle down effect into public perception. Um, we're, we're sure that that occurs, but we are not, again, this hasn't been studied scientifically. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little deaf. <laughs> so, and I didn't bring my hearing aids today. Forgot them. So maybe, maybe João, you can relay the questions. Is there a maximum number of um, um, projects to be uh, selected? No, no. The, 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 I think the maximum ever given an award was something like 19 in, in one cycle. But the tendency has been, maybe it's because of inflation, the tendency has been to reduce. And since the prize money is, is, is a more or less a fixed amount, uh, when you have six, seven projects, it's easier to, to distribute the, the, the prize money in a significant way. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the numbers are tending to be around between six and ten. That's more or less the norm now. 
the question when you presented the Nicosia uh, case, yes. so to say, it is a, a committee, it, or it is not a project or architect, it's a committee of uh, people that live there in the border of the city? In this, uh, no, it's, a, it's an urbanistic project okay. to um, conserve the city center mm -hmm. and uh, in the, not the no man's land, but on, on either side. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it, it's a, it's a committee of architects and urbanists. Yeah, from the Turkish side and and the and the Greek side. Okay. Okay. Hassan, <coughs> there's something called the Chairman's Award which I didn't uh, refer to at all, uh, that is given regularly, not always. It's to the work of an architect that has been particularly significant. So it was given to Hassan Fati. It uh, was uh, given to Oleg Grabar, who is a historian, an architectural historian at Harvard. And um, I had the pleasure of working with him many years ago. And um, <coughs> he was an enormous influence creating the award, uh, informing the work of the award. So he was given the, this, this recognition, the Chairman's Award. Uh, who else? Uh, there was uh, Jeffrey Bauer, the Sri Lankan architect, also received the Chairman's Award. And uh, Rifat Shadirji, who is a very well-known Iraqi architect, got the, the Chairman's Award. Yeah. It's, a, it's, <coughs> an award, it's an award for the opus, the life work of, the, of that architect. So, earlier you mentioned that the foundation keeps an archive. Uh, I figured about uh, all the work you have examined. Uh, is that publicly available? Can we look at it online? Do you have like a, a repository where we can yes. access? Yes, yes. Uh, the the repository is at MIT. It's called ArcNet. A R C H N E T. A R C H N E T. Dot org. And it was created by the Trust <coughs> many years ago with MIT. It's now, it now belongs to MIT. It's run by MIT, the MIT libraries. And um, we give it still a small subvention every year. And everything is available. Uh, all the nominated projects, the shortlisted projects, that those are available <coughs> uh, on ArtNet. And <coughs> if you need, <coughs> if anybody, a researcher, needs high-resolution images, there is a, f a facility in Geneva at the Trust where high-resolution re images can be provided because the images on ArcNet are not high-resolution. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned, but uh, I'm just curious. Because it does, uh, I'm not from Africa. <laughs> well, I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but once the architecture is turned into the, the perspective of the user, I was wondering, because I, I thought you mentioned, but I can't recall, um, did you mention there are other specialists regarding um, analyzing the proposals, and I know it's a besides architects, right. and urbanists, there, there's anthropologists, yes. and sociologists. So other kinds of specialists, who, for instance, uh, it's, it's sticked in my mind the idea of a negative architecture mm -hmm. in the right. space of the, the film. So I was mm -hmm. wondering, there's a congregation of specialists, or it just coming from architecture. There's a, there's a mix that's that's put together. Uh, there have to be some some really good architects, and <coughs> then together with the architects, um, a philosopher or writer, for example, Kwame Anthony Apia. Anthony Appiah, who's a very well-known uh, uh, political philosopher in the United States, has written an enormous amount of work on cosmopolitanism and other subjects. He was on a, a, a jury, a master jury. Um, Swad Amiri, who is a Palestinian writer, who actually trained in architecture. She has a degree, but she's not an architect. Uh, Bashir Suleiman Dian, who is a philosopher at uh, Columbia University. He's from, I think, from Congo, I'm not sure but he now lives in America. He's on the current, uh, on, the, on the last um, 
steering committee or, or master jury, I forget which one. So there's always one or two people who are, are not from the architectural profession, but are sensitive to built form and have thought about it. Maybe they haven't thought about it at all. You know, maybe Appiah was not, hadn't written anything about architecture, but his ideas on pluralism, uh, on living together, were picked up by uh, His Highness or by other people who said, you know, this is an interesting person, we should get him on, on the jury. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, you mean a building by Sinan? No, no, because the, 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 it is an award for, for contemporary architecture, but it, has to, it can't be architecture that's just been finished this year. It has to have been finished, I forget exactly, maybe two years ago. Uh, uh, and it can be older. For example, the Niemeyer example, the building itself is old from the early 50s. The restoration is recent. Um, but there's no question of awarding the, the Al Khan award to Sinan. Yeah. No, no. That wouldn't. Uh, because the Al Khan award also. And the restoration. No, the restoration. There was, there was, no I don't think the. If, I don't think the Alhambra was ever. Yeah, it was a Alhambra, but maybe it's the the system, the water system that. They could be, it could be that, or maybe somebody yeah. made a mistake because I'm not afraid. <laughs> no, it was in a kind of a puzzle. It, in yeah, one of those um, yes. mosaics. Could Mosaic, it, yeah. could it have, the could it have been about because there's Medina del Zara, which is a mm -hmm. uh, a museum in 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 Spain in Cordoba, but um, the the. I'm not aware of any prize for the Alhambra, but I can. You have internet here. Yes. I can. I can look it up. If you just type in Alhambra Aga Khan Award for Architecture, if there's anything, it'll come up. And I'm not familiar with absolutely everything yet. Uh, K H, not K A. -E. Uh, that you probably will recognize anyway. The ceremony was held That's in Granada. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten that. The ceremony was held in Granada. So that's why you could have the Castello de Saint Georges. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.